I'm Indora Ramos, and I'm a certified dental technician of 21 years, and I love to give people a smile. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a one-tooth flipper, a cosmetically functional dental appliance. I start off, I've previously ground a tooth into place and checked shade. I've bent wires called clasps, keeping them in place with a dab of glue so they do not move during processing. After one last check, make sure the tooth is in place, that the position is right, the tilt, the size, it's ready for bonding with the appliance. Place a protective barrier or a Vaseline-like coating on the model to prevent any sticking of the acrylic to the model itself and to have a nice clean finish on the palette. Remove any excessive lubricant Redraw your finishing line. And key a retentive hole in your tooth. All acceptable for bonding. I'm now going to mix the acrylic. Special powder to monomer ratio. This acrylic will start to cure as it's being worked with. Right now it's runny, but as we go along, the thicker it will get. I'm now going to fill my retentive hole in my tooth. This will also aid in the bonding. I dabble acrylic onto the clasps, and I am going to now let the acrylic run through the interproximals of each tooth, making sure that this also helps in the retention or the staying in the mouth, which now will give it its functional process. I continue to dabble my acrylic on both sides, letting the acrylic as it's still in its somewhat flowing state run to where I need it to go. I let the acrylic do the work for me. I continue to apply acrylic until it has become in a state of able to be worked with. All the remaining or what if any bubbles from the underside of where the acrylic and the model meet. Repeat this process and continue to smooth until the material or the process has almost completely cured in your hands. As you can see, the acrylic is getting thicker. This will now help in the aiding of the thickness of the appliance. I can move the acrylic around to where I need it to be, ensuring that the clasps are completely covered and the palette is covered, especially my red finishing line. I continue to smooth the, the acrylic with monomer. I'm 
I will now place my tooth. Making sure that the acrylic has surrounded the tooth to embed it, making sure that there is no bubbles, no rough spots, nothing sticking out. It looks like what's already in the mouth. You tend to not know that there's a false appliance in someone's mouth. Once my tooth has been positioned, one final look over, I'm ready for it to go into a pressure pot of hot water of 120 degrees under 15 pounds of pressure for five minutes. Once the curing time is done, blow off any excessive water, check the bite, make sure the tooth hasn't shift, your clasps haven't shift, or if there's any excessive acrylic holding the bite open. Cutting slightly making sure that it fits the model as the same as it will fit in the mouth. I take a small inverted cone burr and go around the neck of the tooth to give it that lifelike look, that separation from the acrylic, the tooth from the gums. I now take the remaining bulk off the appliance, finishing to my red line. For the final steps or process of the flipper, I'm thinning out the appliance, fine tuning the tooth smoothing any sharp corners. Okay. I'm going to permit to remove any burr marks that were made. We're going to smooth out the palette of the appliance. After pumicing, give the appliance a very good washing. Dry the appliance and add a light coat of high shine polish. One final steam over. Palace seal the palette. Notice how I take my thumb and give it a lip. I'm going to mimic how the appliance will be put in the mouth and taken out of the mouth. And here is my cosmetically functional one tooth flipper dental appliance.
I love what I do. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. I love to see a beautiful smile. 